Good afternoon, Chairman, Chair members. My name is Abigail Lunetta. I am a Democrat, a feminist, and an advocate for women's rights. I am here today because if SB 132, as it is currently written, becomes law, the state of California will sanction the desire of male rapists to share quarters with female inmates. Lest you think this is hyperbole, it's already happening. Right now, Richard Masbrook, a trans-identified male, is currently housed with female inmates in Corona, California. Even though he is serving time for targeting, raping, and torturing women, under no circumstances is this morally justifiable. This bill permits male inmates to be housed with female inmates at the mere request of a male inmate, even though males commit violent crimes three times more often than women. And there are no studies to show that males who self-ID as trans commit less violent crimes relative to the general male population. This bill provides no exceptions for male inmates who have committed violent crimes or crimes against women, including rape, sexual assault, or harassment. This bill does not require officials to consider anatomy, a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, or a mental health diagnosis. It does not require a male inmate to physically present as a woman, take steps to medically transition, nor even to prefer feminine pronouns. All that is required, according to this bill, is a male inmate's desire to be housed with women, even if that male is incarcerated for sexual crimes against women. If passed, this bill would also cost the state of California millions of dollars in increased legal settlements. The Department of Corrections is already known to have a very high rate of sex harassment claims, which has cost taxpayers millions in court battles. Where laws like SB 132 have already been implemented, it has resulted in male inmates sexually assaulting female inmates. The policy has been so egregious in the United Kingdom that they have had to roll back their self-ID policy in order to protect female inmates from further sexual assault. They have since established a separate transgender unit to protect all inmates. I strongly recommend that anyone drafting this bill look into other places where this is happening to compare. The goal to preserve the safety of trans-identified inmates is a noble one, but it is imperative that the Public Safety Committee achieve this goal without compromising the safety of California's female inmate population. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Chair sure, members, thank you for the opportunity to address you today. My name is Greg Burt, and I work for the California Family Council. Uh, Ms. Lunana uh, did a great job explaining how this bill tries to solve a legitimate problem with a terrible solution that puts vulnerable women inmates at risk. But I want to try and give you a perspective of the average person. I challenge you to just randomly walk up to someone on the street and ask them what they think about letting male inmates decide if they want to be housed with women. And we're only talking about men here. You aren't gonna have any biological women decide they would rather be housed in the men's prison. Here are some comments I pulled from Facebook in reaction to this bill. This cannot be true. This is so stupid, I give up. Just another insane idea in California. Here's a comment. I have a sister that works in the California prison system and she told me stories about men saying they were women to get into the women's prison and then attacking women there. What a fiasco this will be. It also gives prisoners a hold over guards and officials with, that further clogs up the judicial system with frivolous, frivolous lawsuits. Uh, the con artists in prison are laughing now. How about this one? Harvey Weinstein is going to have a great time in prison. All he has to do is say, I'm a female, and he'll be housed with the females. Sexual abuse, uh, here it comes. California is going to implode, and, and it goes on like this. There was a one comment from a person who thought this was a good idea. Assembly members, you are living in a bubble if you think California voters want this. 
common sense screams out, this is a really, really bad idea. And I'll wrap up here. Um, uh, if you pass this and Governor Newsom signs it, here's what I hope happens the first day the bill goes into effect. I hope every male inmate all at once declares themselves to be a woman and asks to be housed in the woman's prison. What will you do then? This bill will allow such a situation. Complete chaos will ensue. The voters, the country will hang their head in shame knowing that a state in this union would be willing to pass a bill like this. If you really care about women's safety, you will oppose SB 132. So please, please vote no. Thank you. Um, are there any other, anyone else in opposition to the bill? Are there any questions or comments from committee members? Ms. Rebecca Bauer Cahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I thank the author for bringing this bill. I think it's really important that we protect our trans community and our prisons, and I think you're doing the right thing. But I think the opposition raises a serious concern because there are a lot of people in our prison population that are not honest actors. And how do we prevent from wrongdoing on those parts? Have you thought about that? Is there something in the bill that protects about it? What's your response? Thank you. Um, so. Uh, I could say a lot of things to some of the uh, comments that were made uh, by the opposition. Uh, and if you um, want to have a greater understanding for why it is so hard to be a transgender person in this country or in this world, or why trans people, why we know that just, just this month of June, four trans women, of, four African American trans women have been murdered just in the month of June. And we have an epidemic of trans women in particular in this country being brutalized and murdered. If you want to have any understanding of that, the conversation around this bill gives you a glimpse into that. And we saw it play out and every argument we hear today was made in justification and in support of the North Carolina bathroom bill, if you remember that in the news, that trans people are all sociopaths, that trans people just become trans so that they can go into a women's bathroom uh, and rape and molest women. Remember those arguments that we were hearing out of North Carolina? And remember the justified national backlash uh, against that perspective. Uh, that trans people are not really trans, that they're just going to use trickery and to say that they um, are identify as a woman in order to get access to something. Uh, this is a population that is, the most, is so incredibly marginalized in our society and particularly in the prison system. And we could give you, I don't have to, I don't have to read Facebook comments to you to show you the statistics of how brutalized trans people are in prison. Trans people aren't the ones brutalizing other people. They are the ones being victimized and this bill will help protect them. Uh, the bill provides flexibility for CDCR if there is a specific security concern about an individual to take action. It's, it, that's written into the bill. Uh, but I, I think that this is not this is not this is an issue that is being articulated and there's i don't think any substance to it uh, and so uh, we're all concerned with the security of all of our uh, incarcerated individuals but the victimization that's happening is transgender being people being victimized because of the way that we are treating them in our prison system thank you no i i absolutely agree and i think that you know we hear comments all the time that make it clear why we need to protect our trans communities and I think especially in prisons where people are victimized um, we need to make sure we're protecting them and I appreciate that there is flexibility on the part of CDCR so if there is someone as described by the first opposition witness who um, is not an honest actor then they won't act so thank you and perhaps uh, yeah and for if you want some of those statistics also um, according to a study by UC Irvine 59 percent of trans women held in men's prisons were sexually abused compared to four percent of just cis people in the men's prisons and then nationally trans people who are incarcerated are five to six times more likely than the general population to be sexually assaulted by facility staff and nine to ten nine to ten times more likely to be sexually assaulted by another incarcerated person 
And so the likelihood that folks are going to go into women's prisons and do what they are describing is, is, is very unlikely. And I think there needs to be a more in-depth look at how correctional officers are actually treating trans people, not how trans people are treating people in, while they're incarcerated. Um, and so I just wanted to add that also. Thank you. Uh, again, it happened almost immediately when Thanks. it was implemented in the United Kingdom. Gender self-ID, as soon as it was implemented, there were sexual assaults that were done, implement, that were trans-identified males did that to women. That is why they created a separate unit. Yeah. It Thank happened you. almost immediately. Thank you for your comment. Is there any other questions? It was Kamala Dove. I want to Mr. thank you Mathis. for um, bringing this um, I think rather idealistic bill um, to the um, assembly. I have some questions myself. I am not, uh, and I don't know how to phrase this appropriately, I don't know if I'm as concerned because I believe the statistics that are out there about trans, regardless of if you're incarcerated or not, okay, mm -hmm. being traumatized and assaulted. But I do sort of question um, what's in the bill, what kind of language is in the bill that really talks to those folks who purport to be trans, um, who may want to find their way into a particular facility um, to do to create all kind of mayhem. Um, so that's one question. The other question I have is, I would just like to hear from the author and the experts about the capacity of the prison system to actually accommodate this. I think it's much broader than a pronoun. I think what you said in your testimony, you know, this is not going to fix it, but hopefully it will start a dialogue, is incredibly acutely accurate. Um, but I just am curious about, you know, the because we really should be talking about how to have a culture change within the prison system. Mm -hmm. You know, there are trans folks who are being assaulted and molested and raped, but there are also cis women um, and men who are being, you know, assaulted and raped. And then based on your ethnicity, you have situations where folks are being targeted. If they're not from the same gang, if they're from a different gang, if they're a different race, or if they're a different ethnicity or a different religion. I mean, all of this kind of trauma is happening you know, in these um, prison systems. And I certainly don't believe that CDCR has the capacity to even manage that. So I just wonder, because you talked about that there's language in the bill that talks about the flexibility that CDCR has, if you can kind of speak to this broader issue, because my fear is that we then have this happen and I don't want to get more stats or reports about more trans folks being hurt because we've sort of changed a system that really isn't prepared and then said, okay, let's create the ideal and the real, and then we have more chaos. Because that's, I mean, you know, doing that I think is equal to actually doing nothing and saying, you know, screw you, you're incarcerated, deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just so in, in crafting this, obviously we are working closely with a, a broad coalition, um, but including with uh, trans people who are incarcerated or were incarcerated who understand on the ground what is going to protect their safety. So that what, how we craft this was not done in a, in a vacuum. Uh, and, and that's why the bill also creates flexibility uh, that a trans person's own sense of safety and health is, is factored in. Um, CDCR, um, we have been regularly meeting with CDCR um, starting before we introduced this bill, starting last year. Uh, and CDCR, I, I, don't, I don't speak for CDCR, I don't wanna speak for them, but they reported to us that they want to move in this direction. In fact, they have a working group internally um, to move in this direction. Uh, and so I don't think we're encountering uh, an agency that is saying no, we can't or don't want to do this. They want to get there. Um, clearly, there are a lot of problems in our prison system around violence and many, many other issues. And I'm not going to sit here and say SB 132 is going to like magically fix it all. It's still going to take a lot of work. But this is one s step for one uh, uh, inmate population that has a lot of challenges. And, and so I think that this will not solve everything, but move us in a good direction. So I want to thank you for those comments. You know, I'm going to just add that, you know, I'm skeptical, but I'm not going to get in the way of trying. And you won't know until you try, and then you just move from there. 
Mr. Mathis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just curious because pulling up the opposition stuff with uh, the solution that they did in, in the UK, they ended up doing a separate facility for transgendered. And my question, Senator, is how come we haven't looked at doing that or, you know, instead of running this legislation, run something to set up e either separate block or something along those lines to have a separate, I mean, if, if somebody messed up and they're going to prison, they're going to prison. So it, do we need to look at doing like a separate prison for transgender to make sure they have all the needs and facilities and protections and everything that they need and that those correctional guards there have special training to ensure they know how to treat people. I mean, they should be treating people right anyway, but j just to really ensure that everything's there and all the needs are met. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's, I, I'm just wondering why we're going this direction when we know there's a model over here. We know there was problems over here instead of looking at, okay, this is how they solved it. And now things are better there. Why we aren't just looking at lessons learned from other countries like we do with a lot of other things. Well, because trans women are women, trans men are men. Uh, and uh, I don't, so I don't think you, um, so you don't create a, put a transgender prison. We're, what we're saying is that if you're a trans woman, you're a woman, you should be able to be housed as a woman and invite, you know, I, I understand that's, that's your feelings on it. We're talking about prison populations and subcultures that all have their own very different feelings within those, just as Ms. Um, Kumlaut or Dove pointed out, even in regular prisons, you still have gang members, racial riots and everything else happening where rapes and these things are still happening. So, I mean, we're not gonna be able to change the subcultures within the prisons overnight. And I, I am not so, suggesting. So, so you're, you're in my opinions on, on, on it. It isn't going to change that subculture. Well, if oh, our, yeah. our job is to figure out a solution that's going to keep right. and our we're trans not, population we're, safe. Yeah, we're not trying to, like as I stated, to solve every problem in prisons. Obviously, there are many problems, uh, but we're looking to address one specific issue uh, that transgender incarcerated people are being. Uh, 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 not housed correctly, among other things, uh, which leads to increased violence against them and other problems. And so we're trying to address that one specific issue, understanding that there are broader and other issues that need to be addressed in the prison system. Yeah, and um, I think as a coalition and a community, like not at all would we want to advocate for the construction of a new prison. Like we wouldn't want to create a whole new facility for trans people. Like that's what we're trying to move away from. And I think advocating for a separate facility further stigmatizes and further marginalizes our community um, by saying that like we're a whole different like entity and like just makes us like, it makes us seem like aliens or something. Like we have to be transferred to a whole different place. And it's like, Prison rape is still happening in women's facilities regardless if trans women were transferred there or not by correctional officers and by other people within those facilities. And so I can't reiterate enough that this is really about validating the experiences of trans people as trans women as women and trans men as men. Um, and so I wanted to repeat that. So you're saying that rape oh, no, happens. No, excuse me, ma'am. You don't ask them questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And are you, are you done? No, I was just saying thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and then, are there any more questions or I, statements? I, I, from I just members? think we ought to look at lessons learned. Okay. You, are there any more? Would you like to close? I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Yep. And so I, I look, I, I can see part of the, um, the, the, the dilemma um, that maybe some may have. Uh, even the opposition, I can, can, can see their concern. Uh, look, uh, there was a time where my uncle couldn't go to the same school as white kids mm -hmm. because it would mongrelize or African-American males would rape white women if they went to school together in Little Rock Central High School. And there were people making those claims um, because they didn't understand African-American white kids coming together in the school 
and learning together. I think we're just now really trying to understand the trans community. I mean, this is all new to us and how the um, trans community thinks, how they operate, and we're, we're going with some things of that nature. So that's one of the problems. Two, I, I, I can let the opposition know. Um, CCPOA and I, uh, the California Correctional Peace Officer Association, I asked them about, you know, trans individuals that are incarcerated and how could you, are you able to tell? And they evidently have some very, very, um, I mean, part of the reason you have this bill that it's really hard to identify in, in prison that you're, you're trans. And so uh, CCPOA members have told me we know and we can make sure that individuals know. And so uh, I'll, I'll quickly make my statements and so we can get to the vote. Um, but CCPOA needs to move to the next direction. I believe they are willing to move with all the security considerations. They are, they are better equipped at bringing this. And if they need additional funding, again, that's going to come back on me and the, and the committee I'm in to try to uh, make sure we facilitate. I'm not certain they'll go with a separate facility, but they will come up with a mechanism that works for everybody and keeps everyone safe. And with that, I recommend an I vote. On SB 132, the motion is due pass to the Appropriations Committee. Joan Sawyer. Aye. Joan Sawyer, aye. Lackey? No. Lackey, no. Bauer Cahan. Bauer Cahan, aye. Mathis? No. Mathis, not voting. Kamlogger Dove? Kamlogger Dove, aye. Cork? Santiago? Aye. Santiago, aye. Wicks? Aye. Wicks, aye. Thank you. That measure passes.